the ancient land of Arcadia, where dense forests whispered secrets and misty mountains reached for the heavens, there ruled a king named Lycaon. He was no ordinary ruler, his power was matched only by his ambition, and his reputation was cloaked in both awe and fear. Lycaon was a man of immense wealth and influence, his kingdom stretching as far as the eye could see. But beneath his opulent exterior lay a heart consumed by arrogance and a thirst for power that knew no bounds. His subjects spoke of his cunning ways, his eyes that held the secrets of a thousand schemes, and his laughter that echoed through his marble palace like a haunting melody. Lycaon had many children, sons and daughters, who would collectively be known as the Lycaonides. Of his children, the most notable among them were Callisto, Wentris, and Nyctimus. Callisto was a nymph of extraordinary beauty and grace. Her name meant most beautiful, which aptly describes her allure. With long flowing hair the color of chestnuts, her features were delicate yet striking, marked by high cheekbones, a slender nose, and expressive almond-shaped eyes that held a mixture of curiosity and innocence. As a nymph and a huntress, she possessed an ethereal allure that captivated those who gazed upon her. Her physical appearance was a reflection of her innate connection to the natural world and her role as a follower of the goddess Artemis. Her attire often consisted of simple earth-toned garments that allowed her to move freely through the forests of Arcadia, her natural habitat. Callisto's presence radiated an aura of wildness and untamed spirit, a reflection of her close connection to nature. Being a follower of Artemis, she swore a vow that her chastity and virginity were of the utmost importance. However, her encounter with Zeus changed her fate forever. Callisto would go on to have a child with Zeus, named Arcus. Arcus later grew up to rule Arcadia, but Callisto, however, would be punished for breaking her sacred vows. Enotris was one of Lycaon's many sons. He was a man of commanding presence, with a physique that showcased his strength and resilience. As a leader and explorer, Enotris exuded confidence and determination. His voice carried the weight of authority, yet it was also infused with a compassionate tone that showed his genuine concern for his people. His actions were guided by a deep respect for tradition and a desire to create a better future for his descendants. Anatris would eventually leave Arcadia to settle in the Italian peninsula after being dissatisfied with the division of land among the many brothers by their father Lycaon. Nyctimus was one of the youngest sons of Lycaon. He possessed the regal features characteristic of his royal lineage with a countenance that exuded both strength and wisdom. His eyes, once bright and hopeful, had taken on a melancholic hue, as if burdened by the weight of the responsibilities he bore as a prince of Arcadia. His hair, once a rich shade of brown, had grayed prematurely due to the trials he faced in his tumultuous life. Dressed in the attire befitting his royal status, Nyctimus often wore garments adorned with symbols of his lineage and connection to the land, a heavy cloak draped over his shoulders, its deep blue hue contrasting with the weariness etched into his features. Despite the gravity of his circumstances, his posture remained noble and proud, a testament to his resilience and determination. Nyctimus would go on to be a victim of his father's ruthlessness and heinous plan to disrespect the gods. Lycaon may have been known for his wealth and power, but he was also infamous for his cruelty and impiety. Lycaon believed himself to be above the laws of both mortals and gods, and he tested the boundaries of divine authority. Lycaon had no regard for the gods and their practices. His hubris led him to commit his first sacrilegious act against Zeus. With his defiance of divine authority, he desecrated a temple dedicated to Zeus, showing his contempt for the gods and their sacred spaces. As the sun began to descend and the moon's silvery glow illuminated the world, a different side of Lycaon emerged. He would wander the forests alone, his steps shrouded in darkness, his heart heavy with a curiosity that bordered on madness. He yearned to understand the mysteries that lay beyond mortal reach, to touch the divine and unlock secrets forbidden to mankind. Lycaon had an utter disregard for the sacred rites and traditions of hospitality, a cornerstone of ancient Greek culture. Hospitality was a sacred value in ancient Greece, and guests were expected to be treated with respect and kindness. However, Lycaon rule over his kingdom was characterized by violence, lawlessness, and a disregard for the well-being of his people. He reveled in breaking bread with unsuspecting travelers who sought refuge within his palace, 
only to subject them to unthinkable horrors. In his grand hall he would serve a macabre feast, the flesh of his own subjects disguised as a meal, a perversion of the hospitality oath that had been sworn. This grotesque act was meant to challenge the very foundation of human decency and divine order. After his many acts of atrocities, Lycaon began to receive warnings and prophecies about his impending punishment for his actions. The arrogant king chose to ignore these warnings, believing that it was utter nonsense. But this was something Lycaon could not escape, for once the Moirai began weaving your destiny, your fate was sealed. One fateful night, as the stars burned brightly in the ink-black sky, Lycaon's ambition led him to commit an act that would forever alter his fate. A grand feast was held in his honor, a celebration of his conquests and triumphs. The finest wines flowed, and the air was filled with the scent of roasted meats. But it was not mere animals that graced the banquet table that night. Lycaon's desire to test the limits of the gods, to challenge their omniscience, led him to commit a gruesome atrocity. He took the life of his own son, Nyctimus, a young man whose eyes held the innocence of youth. He cooked his flesh, and the blood of the innocent mingled with the meat of an animal. He presented this feast as a macabre offering to the divine guests. Among those guests was none other than Zeus, the king of the gods himself. The mighty Zeus, with his thunderbolt in hand, and his gaze that pierced the hearts of mortals, had come to Arcadia in disguise. He observed Lycaon's feast with a mixture of curiosity and growing anger, for Zeus was not a deity to be trifled with, and his knowledge surpassed that of mortals. Zeus, the king of the gods, was horrified by Lycaon's audacity and cruelty. As the feast unfolded and Lycaon presented his grotesque offering, Zeus's wrath ignited like a storm-gathering strength. Zeus saw through the ruse immediately and was filled with rage at Lycaon's sacrilegious act. His divine eyes were not easily fooled. This was a test the king of the gods would not ignore. In response, Zeus decided to teach Lycaon a lesson and to punish him for his hubris. The skies erupted in a blaze of lightning, and the heavens themselves seemed to tremble. Zeus's true form radiated power and fury, and he cast his judgment upon Lycaon. No longer would the arrogant king walk as a man, no longer would he bask in the glory of his throne. Instead, Zeus cursed Lycaon, his transformation swift and merciless. Lycaon's body contorted and twisted, his human form torn asunder. Fur sprouted from his skin, muscles reshaped into sinew and strength, and a bestial hunger consumed his thoughts. In the blink of an eye, Lycaon's essence merged with that of a wolf, a creature of the night destined to roam the wilds forevermore. And so the once mighty king was stripped of his humanity, a punishment that matched the depth of his arrogance. Lycaon, now a creature of fur and fang, was condemned to roam the forests and mountains of Arcadia, his voice replaced by a haunting howl that echoed through the night. However, Zeus punished not only Lycaon, but his entire bloodline for his heinous actions. He cursed Lycaon's remaining sons with lycanthropy, causing all those affected to uncontrollably shapeshift into a wolf under certain conditions, most notably under a full moon. This transformation was excruciatingly painful and unavoidable. The curse would continue to pass on through the generations, each descendant having to bear the sins of their ancestor. The tale of Lycaon's transformation spread like wildfire, a cautionary tale whispered around campfires and recounted in hushed tones. It served as a chilling reminder that even the most powerful of mortals could not challenge the divine without consequences. And as the moon hung in the sky, casting its ethereal glow upon the land, the wind seemed to carry the mournful howl of a wolf, a haunting melody that spoke of hubris and the wrath of the gods. However, Zeus's punishment did not end there. Over the years, Zeus had seen the way man operated. Wars, violence, betrayal, and now the sacrifice of one's own innocent child just to spite the gods. Zeus had reached his boiling point and he decided that he needed to teach mankind a lesson. A divine storm began to gather and Zeus was about to open the floodgates. <laughs>